Hello lovely viewers, you are most welcome to our channel Poetry Online. In this lesson, we shall be discussing the detailed analysis of BAT by David Herbert Lawrence. Kindly subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to get updates on all our new videos. Once again, let us assure you of a very interesting discussion. Get ready for this lesson. David Herbert Lawrence was born on the 11th of September, 1885, in Eastwood, Nottinghamshire, England. He spent a good part of his youthful days in Eastwood, a city well known for its mining. D. H. Lawrence was best known for his poems, novels, plays, short stories, essay, and literary criticism. Most of his work revolves around issues involving nature and the devastating effect of the Industrial Revolution on the flawless beauty of nature and the natural environment. He died on the 2nd of March 1930 in Vence, France. The title of his poem, Bat, quickly informs readers of what is to be discussed. However, our poetic speaker moves on to describe the flawless beauty of nature and the natural environment before the period of industrialization. The poem seems to be a happy one, which does not immediately address its title. From stanza 1 to 11, our poetic speaker points a perfect picture of the beauty of nature before he finally introduces us to the title, but. The simple question we have to ask ourselves here is that, why did he choose the animal bat? Couldn't it have been any colorful and attractive bird? Why does the introduction of bat in the poem change the tone of the speaker from a happy one to a sad one? Is the bat a symbol of hatred or a symbol of love? Well, all these questions will be answered when we take a deeper analysis of the lines contained in the poem. From line 1 to 5 of the poem, we come across the following lines. At evening, sitting on this terrace, when the sun from the east, beyond Pisa, beyond the mountain of Carrara, Depart, and the world is taken by surprise. When the tired flower of Florence, as in a gloom beneath the glooming brown hills, surround him. The setting of the poem is obviously a terrace of a house in Italy, where our poetic persona is actively involved in an observation process. The poem is very dramatic and begins like a conversation between two people. He addresses a silent listener, telling them the exact place he sat and observe whatever he is about to tell them. He also talks about places like Pisa, Carrara and Florence. These are places which are characterized by extreme beauty of nature. Instead of discussing bats, the speaker is more than interested in discussing the perfect and flawless beauty of nature. The tired flower of Florence we come across suggests that the day is drawing to an end. What this simply means is that the world is about to transition from one period to another and the world is taken by surprise. When under the arches of the point of virtue, a green light enters against the stream, flash from the west against the current of obscure anno. 
here again, our politics speaker seems to be unbordered about anything as he continues to praise and celebrate the beauty of nature. He uses a few Italian words like Pont Vesu and Anno to describe the beauty of nature. Pont Vesu is a bridge built with shops along it, while Anno is a large river. Our poetic speaker continues to draw elements of nature to paint a vivid picture of the beauty of nature before the period of industrialization. Look up and you see things flying between the day and the night. Swallows with spool of dark thread sewing the shadow together. Here again, our poetic speaker draws the attention of his readers and the silent listeners he is addressing to some creatures flying in the sky. The poem becomes more dramatic and conversational when he used the personal pronoun, you, to address his silent listeners. In these lines, the poet shifts from the beauty of nature to describe some unusual birds who move closely together, making their shadow look as if it has been sewn together with a thread. A circle swoop and a quick parabola under the bridge arches where light pushes through, a sudden turning upon itself of things in the air, a dip to the water. Here again, our poetic speaker continues with his description of the strange bird he sees in the sky. These strange birds we are talking about fly in circles and swoop up and down. And you think the swallows are flying too late. Swallows. It seems our poetic speaker has finally shifted his attention from the beauty of nature as he really concerns himself with the strange bird he is talking about, which he considers as swallows. These strange birds never cease to amaze our poetic speaker. He is confused as how the swallows could be flying late in the night. In line 19 to 24, we come across the following. Dark air life looping, yet missing the pure loop. A twitch, a twitter, an elastic shudder in flight, and serrated wings against the sky, like a globe, a black globe thrown at the light and falling back. Here again, the poet goes on to describe the physical features of the bird he is talking about. These are birds that are usually active at night. They do not fly with a pure loop. Their wings are described as serrated and their skin is described as black glove. The description of the bird alone brings only negativity or negative thoughts in the speaker's mind and the speaker dislikes it. In line 25 to 30, we come across the following. Never swallows, bats. The swallows are gone. At the wavering instant, the swallows gave way to bats. By point visual, changing guard. After giving a detailed description of the birds in the sky, our poetic speaker realizes that those birds are not swallows, but rather birds. He expresses a deep shock at this new development. He laments how the birds had changed guard and switched places from daytime swallows to nighttime birds. This replacement of swallows 
by birth as metaphorically referring to ceremony at a Buckingham Palace where new centuries take over from old ones. In line 31 to 33, we come across the following lines. Bath and an uneasy creeping in one's crowd as the bird swoop overhead, flying madly. The description of birds in this line by our poetic speaker is nothing to write home about. The sight of the birds flying in the sky alone makes our speaker to feel uneasy as he finds them so disturbing. The speaker's strong distaste for birds is shown in his uneasiness and discomfort at the presence of the birds. He goes on to prove to readers that the birds he saw in the daytime were swallows and not birds. For the birds are flying madly. Flying madly suggests chaotic and disorderly movements. In line 34 to 38, we come across the following lines. Pipisterio Black piper on an infinitesimal pipe, little lamb of fly in the air, and have voices indefinite, wildly vindictive, wings like bits of umbrella, bats. And this lines, our poetic speaker calls the birds by their Italian name, Pipistrello, and goes on to show his dislike for these creatures. Here again, he deliberately used the color black to refer to bats, depicting them in a negative way. Therefore, only negative thoughts and feelings run through the minds of our poetic speaker as he sees these bats. Not only is the physical features of the bat distasteful to our poetic speaker, even their voices make him uncomfortable, as he described them to have voices indefinite, wildly vindictive. He moves on to describe the wings of the bat by claiming it looks like an umbrella. In line 40 to 46, we come across the following lines. Creatures that hang themselves up like an old rag to sleep and disgustingly upside down, hanging upside down like rows of disgusting old rags and grinning in their sleep. But in China, the bat is a symbol for happiness not for me. The speaker's dislike for bats are more evident in this line. He explores more or dwells more on the imperfection of the animal bats. According to him, the bats hang themselves upside down to sleep like old rats and he described their sleeping as disgusting. Not only is their sleep disgusting, they also grind in their sleep. The poet ends the poem by emphasizing the right for the individual to have a choice. He says that even though the bat is a symbol of happiness in other parts of the world like China, but that is not so for him, for the bat is not a symbol of happiness to him. Therefore, her strong dislike for bat is evidently clear and this lines. Thanks for watching this video. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video. So we'll meet again in our next lesson. It's bye for now.